Whereas building the coop was straightforward, acquiring our chickens was surprisingly difficult, particularly for such a rural area. With our Stone Age internet connection, it took me several hours to reach the conclusion that nobody in Clare was advertising chickens online. The business telephone directory had no listings under chickens or poultry farmers, and my inquiries at the local post office produced only a shrug and a blank stare. Just as I was starting to think our chicken coop was doomed to become a quirky doorstop, Leslie hit pay dirt. Bursting into the house after a shopping trip, she beamed and told me what she had discovered. You need to see the chicken lady. Excuse me? There's an old woman called the chicken lady, she said. She visits several markets on Saturdays and sells chickens from the back of a white van. How did you hear this? I was at the garage getting petrol, and I saw they had loose eggs for sale in a basket on the counter. She tapped her head with a finger. So, I thought, eggs equals chickens. I asked where they got their chickens, and the garage owner's wife told me about the chicken lady. Leslie smiled proudly. She'll be at Gort Market on Saturday morning. You should be there at 9.30am. And so I was. But the chicken lady wasn't. Miserably, I sat in my car trying to keep warm as I watched the rain streaming down the windscreen. After half an hour, just as I was considering giving up, a battered white van swept into the car park. It was small, no larger than my hatchback car, and noticeably lacking in any chicken lady signage. It was the first new arrival I'd seen for some time, so I took a chance. Climbing out of my car and opening my umbrella against the steadily falling rain, I turned towards the van only to find it obscured by a crowd of perhaps thirty men. Where did they come from? I thought. I was the only person here a moment ago. Like a brazen drug dealer, a tiny, wrinkled woman of indeterminate age, wrapped in a thick coat and a headscarf, was selling chickens to the men. My chickens! How dare they! Fearing I was likely to go home empty-handed, I joined the throng. There appeared to be no recognisable queuing system. Rather like a busy British bar, the men crowded in and frantically waved their cash, while a wizened lady randomly chose the next lucky recipient. There was a brisk trade in poultry and ducks, so the crowd soon began to thin, but I was having no luck attracting the chicken lady's attention to my waved notes. I resorted to looking harmless and pathetic. It worked. What'll it be, love? Three chickens, please. Cable or point? she asked. Excuse me? She looked me up and down and smiled benevolently. First time? Feeling how I imagine a teenager at a brothel would feel, I admitted I was. Do you want chickens for your dinner? She asked slowly. Or do you want point of lay? And she added as an afterthought. For eggs? Oh, eggs, I babbled. Definitely eggs. Reds or bantams? Uh, she smiled and rolled her eyes. Are you wanting big or little eggs? The men were staring at me with obvious curiosity, as if I were a contestant on a game show. Big eggs, I suppose, I said cautiously. Right, three reds it is. The chicken lady rubbed her hands together. That'll be eighteen euros. I handed over the money. She tipped her head on one side and made a sad face. Are you going to put them in your pockets? I frowned in confusion. The man at my side gleefully helped me to understand. You don't got a box? I slapped my forehead. What an idiot I felt. Everyone laughed. They were all enjoying the entertainment. I suspected the tale of the hapless English fool with chickens in his pockets would be doing the rounds of the pubs for some time. Can't I put them in the back of the car? Not if you don't want them flying around the car, you can't, someone said. Loose chickens have to wear a seat belt, a second voice added. It's the law. Now, lads, give over, will you? The chicken lady snapped. Or I'll send you all home empty-handed. There were a few inaudible mumbles of discontent, but the men complied. She turned her benevolent eyes back to me. Don't you worry, love. I've a spare box in the back. Thank you, I sighed, genuinely grateful. She stuffed three chickens into a box with all the care of someone loading a washing machine, before handing them over to me. Thank you, I repeated. Any time you want chickens, you come and see me. She smiled and winked. 